Last night, I dreamt I snorted sugar cane from the lap of the most beautiful woman I'd ever seen. The sun was warm and so aggressively gentle, I laid down sideways in a station wagon. Her face was haunting, but I couldn't look away. She stroked my hair. I didn't have to tell her my heart had been broken. She knew I'd never act this way otherwise this morning. I woke up with all the lights on. Heart still broken, still in the same clothes from last night, the green plaid vest he used to like, the shirt he said was the softest he'd ever felt, and pants he called Artist Purple because he had no other name for them. I was literally clothed in thoughts of him. I came out of my slumber in a daze and prayed to God that I would hear from him, that he'd stop doubting whether he deserves me and just call. I laid down on green sheets covered by a purple blanket. Somehow he'd noticed my preference for these colors before I even had. I fought the urge to play the first mix CD he ever made me a purple disc in a green case covered in a cursive L, though it looked more like my attempts at etch-a-sketch circles. He knew I wrote in cursive, because the night of our first official date, he paused when I said, sexy is not a word in my vocabulary. I don't care much about looks. Nervous, he asked me if I was attracted to him, and he said we weren't going anywhere until I answered him. After what felt like eternal silence, I tore a page from my green and purple notebook covered in elephants. In elegant cursive, I scrawled, yes. I'm attracted to you, you fucking asshole. <laughs> Folded it up, threw it at him, then ran away. I ran to a park bench hidden in the bushes. And in the same notebook, in purple pen, wrote, there are many things in my life that have made me put up walls, but somehow I want him in my world. I waited five minutes before going back, then ran into him halfway. We must have started looking for each other at the same time. He pretended he couldn't read cursive, but I knew his game. He just wanted to hear me say the words out loud, but when I tried to bolt, he grabbed me and it reminded me of I Love Lucy. When Ricky puts his palm to Lucy's forehead and she swings her arms even though she can't go anywhere, <laughs> it was useless to fight him. But boy, did I try. And now, I'm fighting memories, like the time he said our correspondence has been the ultimate litmus test how I then had to Google litmus test. <laughs> of the Chinatown restaurant where everyone knew him, my fortune cookie said, don't be so overly critical. And I got mad because a cookie went in on my life. <laughs> yeah. Clearly I haven't changed much, but I sure am trying but I refused to let go of my favorite memory of us. We played with yellow Play-Doh. He rolled his into a ball. I formed mine into a star, put it on his hand and said, you look like a barnacle. He laughed and said, oh yeah? Well, you look like the mother of a starfish. He meant it as a comeback, but all I heard was poetry, a confirmation of everything I love about him, but now, he says he's hesitant to waste my time. I haven't seen him in a while, but all I have to say to him is this. If you don't come around as much anymore, that's okay. Just don't erase me before I get to erase you. <laughs> <laughs>